So I'm out hiking today and I thought uh, I would take the opportunity to do a quick walk and talk video. And today I thought I would talk about sleep because when I retired, some of the biggest changes that I made in my life was figuring out how to get much better sleep. And there's quite a few things that I did and they all kind of contributed. I'm not sure what the relative importance of the different things are. You can pick and choose and try some of them out maybe. So the first one is, I always try and get up at exactly the same time in the morning. When I say exactly, I mean sort of within about 20 minutes or something like that. And ideally, I like to wake up before I have any sort of alarm clock or anything like that that wakes me up. So I've done a few things to help me with that. And the simplest one really is light. So I have one of those kind of sunrise kind of alarm clocks that just gradually starts to brighten the room up before my intended wake time. And so generally speaking, you know, it's at full brightness just a few minutes before the alarm goes off. And I'm awake just a few minutes before the alarm goes off. And as I say, I try and always wake up at the same time in the morning, no matter what time really I go to bed at night. And that seems to be pretty important in terms of making sure that you sleep better the following day. And then the next thing that I try and do is make sure that as soon as possible really, after waking up, I get lots of really bright light. And that's really easy to achieve by going out for a walk in the morning when the sun is up. But since I wake up normally about seven o'clock in the morning, it's dark. So I can't get that early morning light. And so what I actually did it's kind of relevant to gardening is I have this grow light that shines down on top of the wardrobe in the bedroom and that grow light comes on at my wake up time so just like a minute before the alarm and it's really bright <laughs> and so I kind of wake up and get dressed and brush my teeth and all that while that grow light is really blasting out and of course on top of that wardrobe is a lot of my seedlings so I do quite a lot of uh, growing in the bedroom everything's out of sight on top of the wardrobe you can't really see it, it doesn't get in the way of anything it's only kind of useful no downside at all to it so I really like that but uh, when the timing's right, I generally go for a walk along the beach first thing in the morning and get a good dose of the sun rising. And there's something really special about watching the actual sunrise process and seeing that those colours, those frequencies of light, really low down on the horizon just seems to help with uh, the sleep management process. And as I understand it, sort of on a psychological basis, the reason for it is that, on a physiological basis, is that those frequencies of light, low down in the sky, kind of do a reset of the circadian clock, the clock that manages the processes in the body, physiological processes of the body that operate on a daily, cycle so really useful thing to do and so the next thing that I tried to do was get a lot more activity during the day so be out and moving and act, you know active physically and mentally so that by night time I'm actually tired not really tired not exhausted but just kind of really looking forward to snuggling into bed and you know when i wake up in the morning i'm fully restored so it's that sort of tired that kind of good tired you know the tired that tells you 
that you've had a good day that you've filled it with uh, productive you know challenging activities and then when you wake up you just can't wait to get on and have another day like that so by the time next sort of phase of my activities relate now to the evening and what we try to do is control our lighting and so we've kind of got dual lighting systems in our house and we pretty much got rid of the central lights during the evening and we only use those during the day and they're kind of just you know bright white lights and then at night we use mostly table lamps and up lighters and back lighters and things like that and those for the early part of the evening are really low warm sort of like firelight candlelight kind of lights so they're low light levels they're warm light and they're also low down so there's nothing high in the sky which might make you think of the sun at midday they're like the setting sun so they're kind of horizon level lighting so that's downstairs so basically we've got all of this nice subdued warm cozy lighting downstairs and then upstairs all of our lights that we'll be using in the evening are all red and again that gives you the kind of the sun has set it's definitely you know just you know below the horizon the only light is this sort of red subdued sort of glow and that's the light that we have when we're going to bed and also that's the light i have in the bathroom when i'm having a bath and that's the next thing that i tried to do which is to always have a really hot bath before i go to bed and to then cool down and it's as i understand it again physiologically it's that cooling down process that helps you sleep and of course there's nothing better than getting out of a hot bath and then cooling down and what i tend to do is just read then in bed uh, with no covers on and so i just you know cool down really rapidly and as soon as i get to that point where there's just a slight bit of kind of mild discomfort because it's that cold then uh, i jump in bed and i'm asleep within two or three minutes and in order to kind of really embrace the heat of the bath i read in the bath for about an hour before i go to bed so the final thing that springs to mind relating into getting into a bit of sleep at night is that I try and have a really rigid going to bed routine and that tends to be as I said you know bath read get out of bed get out of the bath read sleep so the next thing that springs to mind is that I really I think it's important not to eat within about three hours of going to bed so since I go to bed about 10 10 30 11 o'clock something like that I like to stop eating at about seven o'clock at night so the next thing is once you kind of got to sleep is that you want to get into deep sleep as quickly as possible because deep sleep is incredi incredibly restorative and important and so you want to get into it as quickly as possible and stay in it for a fairly long time and the best way to do that is i think to have a cool bedroom and a cool bed now in winter it's not too difficult to have a cool bedroom just to have the heating on and open the windows during the day so you've got lots of lovely fresh air and 
that cooling down process in bed is really great from the perspective of getting you into deep sleep. In summer, that's a bit trickier. And so I've got what's called an Oola, which is a kind of cooling mattress topper. And it has cold water running through it. And it cools the bed, in my case, down to about five to seven degrees centigrade below room temperature and often in summer that is actually not enough for me but it's as good as this little thing will do but it certainly means that when you get in the bed it feels cold and you can really snuggle in and wrap yourself up in the covers and uh, you know just feel really safe snuggly and secure and cold but you soon body soon warms up and responds but anyway i'm asleep by then so within two or three minutes i'm asleep now although lots of people will tell you you need eight hours of sleep i generally don't get that i find i just wake up naturally at about between seven and seven and a half hours but that seems to leave a great opportunity for me to have a nap in the afternoon so when i get back from this hike about two o'clock and I will generally have a nap at about three o'clock and I have a nap for 34 minutes because it takes me about four minutes to fall off to sleep so I have about a 30 minute nap now some people find that they're too groggy when they wake up from a 30 minute nap and maybe 22 minutes might be better or 24 minutes but for me I'm fine as long as I kind of get up and do something uh, as soon as I wake up from the nap then uh, I'm absolutely fine and whilst I really like going to sleep in the cold I do like having my nap in a completely different way so I, I lay down in the sat on the sofa in my conservatory and I love it when the sun's out and it's really warm in there and obviously I don't wrap myself up in any covers or anything because I'm fully dressed so uh, yeah I just I just love lying there in the sun. It's like sunbathing and uh, falling off to sleep lovely and warm. And I think there's something nice about that contrast between the evening and the afternoon nap. You know, that makes them they're not the same thing. So the body seems to respond, the mind, perhaps more importantly, seems to respond differently to a nap. It knows that it's going to wake up pretty quickly. Now, I don't happen to be sensitive to caffeine, so I can drink caffeine no problem at all. And it doesn't affect my sleep. But if it affects yours, then maybe don't have caffeine after about two o'clock in the afternoon. But of course, sleep doesn't always go right. So what happens if you can't get to sleep? And this definitely would happen to me a lot in my working life that my mind would just be a buzz with ideas or problems or something like that. So I just recommend if that's happening to you, get up, get a piece of paper, write down everything that's currently kind of in your head and get it out of your head onto the paper. And then you probably will never need to look at that piece of paper again because you know, you're just thinking of potential issues and whatever. They're often not really relevant by the time you wake up in the morning. But uh, now that I'm retired, obviously I don't kind of generally have that problem so much. I tend to have more of a problem when I'm not very well. And when I'm not very well, what I try to do is embrace it. So recently I've had a really bad cough and I just couldn't get to sleep. So I would stay up later in the night so that I was a lot tireder. So rather than going to bed at say half 10, I'd go to bed at half 12. Still get up at the same time in the morning or thereabouts, but kind of embrace it, break some of the rules. So I would watch some TV. I save up TV series specifically to watch 
if I'm not doing so well. And uh, so during this period, about two weeks, I watched Money Heist and uh, had some of my favorite snacks, things like fresh cherries, for example, eat those, which was a lovely treat. And I found that combination of staying up late, watching some great TV, eating my favorite foods, you know, it's kind of made it a bit like an event, something to maybe not quite look forward to, but certainly balance out the negative of being ill. Go to bed late, and because I was extra tired, I would uh, still then manage to get off to sleep. Sometimes I did wake up in the middle of the night, not illness related, just uh, sometimes like a strange dream that got stuck in my head or something like that, or something that woke me up. Struggled to get off to sleep again. So after about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, again, I would just recommend getting up and kind of repeating that routine, you know, go downstairs, watch a favorite TV show, read a favorite book, something like that. And then an hour later, go back to bed, fully kind of reset and uh, you get off to sleep again, much better than you would if you were just lying there, tossing and turning. So generally that principle, bed is for sleeping, it's not for tossing and turning. If you can't sleep, get up. So I have a few gadgets that I think are useful. As I mentioned, I've got this Ula cooling mattress. I've got this amazing quilt, which I absolutely love that works well with the cooling mattress because when you've got a cooling mattress, it's important to keep your, the cold in the bed. So, so even in summer, I have this quite nice warm quilt which insulates me from the warm air outside of the uh, outside of the bed environment, which I highly recommend. And I've got these really cheap and cheerful um, wireless switches, which I use to switch on all the kind of table lamps and things like that in the rooms. And I just have those blue tacked actually to the actual light switches so the light switches are what I use to put the main central lights on but then I've got these wireless switches to put the multiple low level lights on and then I make a lot of use of the Wi-Fi plugs which uh, are also timers and they're absolutely brilliant for switching on my uh, grow lights you know at seven o'clock in the morning and for switching on sort of like led lights and things like that that we've got in various places around the house which automatically come on uh, as the sun sets and things like that and all of these gadgets i've actually got now in my amazon store if you're interested in any of them and the Ula, that heat mattress cooler in particular, is quite expensive, but honestly, it's just been transformative in terms of improving my sweet sleep quality. And I even use it in winter because I, I really like my bed to be about 15 degrees centigrade. And the bedroom, even though it's unheated, tends to be about 18 degrees. So I use it just to drop the temperature just a little bit. But in summer, I try to get the temperature down about 11 degrees centigrade. And uh, yeah, that really helps. So having mentioned gadgets, it's just struck me that maybe I should mention tracking your sleep. And I have done that. I think the, I have an Apple Watch right now. It doesn't do a particularly good job of sleep tracking. The Fitbit Versa 2, I think, that I had before that did a much better job of sleep tracking. And I did find that useful when I was kind of looking at the effect of things like the cooling mattress 
and some of the other things that I tried out that really significantly improved my sleep quality. And I could see that you know, very clearly in the sleep tracking data. Nowadays, maybe it's just because I have an Apple Watch that doesn't do a very good job of sleep tracking. Uh, I don't worry about it so much. I don't feel like I've lost anything as a result of that. And I think it's because I've just basically got my sleep uh, dialed in now. So I find that provided I do the things I've just talked about in this video, give myself an eight, week, eight hour sleep window, then I'm pretty much always just fine, feel great. So uh, I don't really bother now with any kind of sleep tracking. My body seems to tell me when I'm doing a good job and when I'm not. So, hope you like this walk and talk video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And I'll see you soon. Right, it's time for breakfast. And this is a great place for it.